going on guys? This is Jake Berkey bringing you a Busted Knuckle Films Rock Rods Tech Tip video. This time we're going to be talking about shaving a 14 bolt axle. Now, why a 14 bolt axle? Well, they are strong. They have tons of aftermarket support. You can find them just about anywhere and they're cheap. They're great axles for an axle swap, especially if you have a lot of horsepower and big tires. These things are fantastic. But just like about everything, they do have a few downfalls that need to be addressed. One of which is this thing has terrible ground clearance in stock form. They have a huge lip that hangs down the bottom and you need to address it. A lot of guys are taking grinders, grinding the bottom of the differential down so that there's a smooth transition from the yoke all the way back to the cover. But if you want the most performance out of your 14 bolt, you need to get what's called a 15 bolt kit. TMR Customs manufactures it. BerkeyRacing.com is where you can get it. And there are two different kits. The first kit, you're gonna actually have to machine your ring gear down. The second kit, you're not gonna have to do that. The first kit that I was talking about is gonna give you the ultimate in ground clearance, but you're gonna have some added expense and time in shaving that ring gear down. The second kit, you don't have to do any of that shaving, but you're gonna sacrifice just a little bit of ground clearance. So make sure that when you're checking out, you see which one you have and make sure you buy the right one. Now, I'm gonna show you a video here in just a second of how I'm actually putting this thing together and then I'm gonna get back on and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about some of the specifics on how you need to do it. The first thing that you wanna do is go ahead and bolt the differential cover to the differential. Then scribe a line between the flange plate and the housing. Then use your bottom plate. I took a clamp and clamped it right here and lined it up perfect. Then if you look underneath, you can project a line from the underside of that flange plate and that bottom plate over to the housing. Mark a line all the way across the housing where you're going to cut. Be conservative, cut it a little bit high because the next step, you're gonna take your flange plate and your bottom plate, bolt them together, set it on top of the axle, and then you're gonna keep on grinding until everything lowers down and your bolt holes line up. So if you look, the top line is where I scribed earlier. Then I took my bottom plate and I used that as a guide to mark the bottom line and that's actually where we're gonna make the cut. And if you look, I've already started to cut and it works really well just using a reciprocating saw. Hold it nice and flat to the housing and keep on cutting and you can actually hit that line all the way around and all the way out the other side. Once you get that done, then all you have to do is bolt the bottom plate to the cover and then grind it into where it sits perfectly and all the bolt holes lined up. So after watching that last video, you can see how you take the differential and you cut very slowly and you grind very slowly until you can lower the differential cover all the way down and all the bolts are gonna line up. You just keep on grinding until it all matches up smooth. Now, I've done this a couple times before, so it took me about 40 to 45 minutes to be able to get the differential to cover to sit on perfect. But for the first time, or it's probably gonna take a little bit longer, but be patient, be careful, because you don't want to cut too much off and then have to fill up a big gap. The next thing I want to talk about is preheating the casting before you do the welding. Anytime you weld to cast iron, you're going to have to preheat before you do your welding. Cast iron has a very loose grain structure, and that loose grain structure likes to pull a lot of heat out of welds. So what you need to do is you need to heat the casting up. People recommend anywhere from 400 to 800 degrees, depending on the casting and the size. You can do some research and come up with what degree you do. I've done it at 500 degrees and been very successful in the past, so that's what I like to stick with. But what you need to do is you need to heat the casting up with a torch. Keep on heating the casting until it's very uniform throughout the entire casting. What you're trying to do is keep that weld heat from being sucked into the casting very rapidly. Because what happens is when you weld, if that casting sucks the heat out, it's gonna cause it to cool down very rapidly and it creates stress in the material right there where your weld's at. And a lot of times it'll crack. So when you do this, heat it up, and then make sure it's uniform, run your weld, and when you get done welding, you wanna put heat back onto it to make sure that you don't have a differential in your heat cooling rates. 
Another thing that you can do is called peening. And what you do is you take a hammer and you basically tap the weld while it's still nice and warm. And what that does is it takes a weld, if you picture a kind of a domed weld, and you hit on top, it's going to flatten that weld out. And when it does that, it's going to keep that stress from building up right next to the weld and where the casting meets. So that's another thing you need to do. Now, when you get everything welded and you've got a lot of heat inside that differential, you need it to cool down slowly. You're going to take it and wrap it up in a blanket or something. I use welding blankets and let that cool down slowly. I've seen guys bury it in sand. It works really, really well if you bury it in sand. It holds a lot of heat, but basically you need to keep that temperature as long as possible and let it all cool down at the same rate to keep the stresses from happening. Another thing that you can do is use a nickel rod, like a stick rod. I happen to be an absolutely terrible stick welder, so I like to use the MIG. Um, some guys don't like using MIG. It's actually not the right way to do it, but I have had a lot of success out of it. I've never had a failure, so I think that it works really well. Preheat, postheat, shot peening or peening, and then just making sure that your welds are nice and smooth. Um, another thing that you want to do whenever you're welding up a differential, um, don't use a ton of heat and try to get one good penetrating weld. It's actually better if you use a little bit less heat and then do multiple passes to spread the weld all over a large area. And when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to get a little bit stronger weld because you're not using as much heat, but you're also distributing the amount of heat and the amount of weld material over a larger area. When you get done, Put all your gears and everything else up, set it up just like you normally would and enjoy. You're going to notice a lot more performance out of your vehicle. It's not going to get caught on rocks nearly as easy. So I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure that you go on to Jake Berkey Riot Buggy on Facebook. Like the Facebook page. That's where we're dumping all these videos. Go and make sure that you like the Busted Knuckle Films website and also the Rock Rod stuff. Check out some of the apparel and things that we got. I think you guys are really going to like it. I hope you like the video. Make sure you shave that 14 bolt or at least cut off the bottom. It's going to increase your performance a ton.